Hey everybody, how are you? It's Allison Solar, kitchen and bath design specialist and coach to other interior designers looking to increase their knowledge on kitchen and bathroom design and business. And okay, so today talk to your audience. We can't see the names and profiles. Send them a link so they can grant a live. Okay, so let's see if I can make this happen because I always have a problem going back and forth. Okay. Okay, post app Eli to sharing your screen and audio. Okay, so let me go back to be live. All right, so hopefully people are going to come on. And if you don't come on now, maybe you'll watch this later. Basically, what I wanted to talk about was built-in appliances and how you go about specifying them, what are the proper heights for the appliances to be, the locations, this, that, and the other thing. There are recommended guidelines set forth in the National Kitchen and Bath Association. Now, if you look at a lot of these um, guidelines, okay, and then you look at appliance specs, okay, and then you're looking at your customer, okay, how do you decide exactly where the placement of those appliances should be? You go by like, okay, they have this cabinet for a microwave, that cabinet for a microwave, and this for built-in and that for built-in. So as a kitchen designer, there are lots of options when it comes to placing your built-in appliances. But the appliance specifications, first of all, can be hard to find. And second of all, are absent on the internet. And third of all, don't always tell you where to put it, what's the height, et cetera. So to get started, I wanted to, now let's see how this sharing goes. This is B Live. I'm always not sure what to do. I wish I could do it in Zoom because I can share my entire screen in Zoom and not hide and hide myself and just share the screen. I don't know how to do that. But um Let's see this. I have no I have to keep myself in stream. And there's other ways to do this. But then I hide me. So then I get hidden. So stupid. And then that's super small. So anyway, if you can see this. What the NKBA, National Kitchen and Bath Association, recommends is that the bottom of appliances be no less than 15 inches above the floor from the bottom of the appliance. However, you, if you look in an in a appliance catalog, it doesn't tell you how high to place the cabinet, the appliance off the finished floor. So we have to assume that we all know that the minimum is 15 inches above the finished floor. So you can't go lower than 15 inches. Think about it um, physically. How far reaching down is, how far reaching up is, reaching forward. Uh, we're performing tasks in a kitchen and it should be the ease of appliance, um, using the appliance, accessing the appliance safely and without hazard. So they're suggesting no less or recommending no less than 15 inches above the floor. I know that um, uh, somebody, yes, I'm live now and I'm in my group. I'm live. Let's see if it gets in my, let's see if that works. Um, yeah, but as we're talking about the, uh, let me know, let me just ask her, let me know if you can 
see me and my screen. I always have a problem with the screen and sharing in my screen. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I check my Facebook through my phone. Is it going to show that I'm now live? Uh, could you imagine my coach? Well, I don't know that it's showing me live in my group. I should be live. I don't know. All right, whatever. I don't know how to check. I don't know how to see. Supposedly, this is live in my group. So let me just ask her if she got it. I got it. Okay, so she's going to let me know whether she can see it or not. You are. Yes, you are live. Well, I'm alive. I'm live. I'm live, everybody. Live, live, and I don't jive. So anyhow, getting back to uh, not necessarily that my screen is good or I'm good, but whatever. So here, 15 inches above the floor. Now, I know that electrical outlets are 15 inches above the finished floor. So basically, an outlet should be 15 inches off the floor. If you go around your house and you look at all your outlets and duplexes and whatnot along the floor, you're going to see that they should be 15 inches off the floor. So it's the same premise for an appliance, 15 inches off the floor. Now your appliances, okay, we have the, the height of the appliances. So then when we get to countertop height, we're at 36 inches. Where is the ideal location for appliances? The ideal location is eye level and easy within to reach our general shoulder area within a few inches up and a few inches down while you're standing. Given to take that each person is different, the height of each end user is different, and you will have variations. But for the most part, we're talking average. Um, you can make uh, customizations according to your customer's height and um, space because if someone's extremely tall, you want to design the kitchen for them. Uh, I always say design the kitchen for you, not for the people moving in after you because you never know. They're not going to even like your style or they're, they might hate what you've done. So design your kitchen for what you want and what fits you. As long as it's new and clean and updated, you'll get your money's worth for the kitchen. So we have a standard height for the countertop is 35 and three quarters to 36 inches above the finished floor. Then the countertop height to the bottom of the cabinet, the backsplash height is typically 18 inches. Anything higher starts to become a little bit more of a, of a hardness, a strength on your shoulders to reach up higher and it be, gets out of your eye level. So figure your, your eye level is like 60 inches off the floor for the most part, 60 inches. So they're saying the bottom of the appliances, the very bottom is up at 54 inches off the floor. So if you have a microwave over the range, if you have a built-in microwave or appliance, a, um, a coffee machine, any kind of a built-in, a speed oven, whatever the built-in, the bottom of the appliance should be at no more than 54 inches above the finished floor. Now, keeping in mind, we always work in inches when it comes to kitchens. We don't talk feet. We talk inches. Not everybody quite understands this. And they don't, even you could tell it to a customer and they're like five foot, two inches. You're like, no, right? 62 inches. So anyway, um, I digress as usual. So when you have these, now, if I make this bigger, am I still going? I don't know what happened. Three, two, one, it did. Ooh, I don't know. So here we have a variety of cabinetry. 
associated with the built-in appliances. You have a, a wall oven with a microwave or something above it. It could be a wall double oven. It could be just a wall single oven. The ideal location is no higher than 15 inches off the floor and the bottom of the, the main appliance, uh, the bottom of the appliance, no higher than 54 off the floor. So then when it comes to, let's hide that, and I'm gonna show you what's the side version because the microwaves come in, different depths, these cabinets. And so when your customer is specifying a microwave, a speed oven, a, a coffee maker, I don't care what it is, you need to have the appliance specifications for the proper design. You can't go pick your, pick your microwave after and we'll work it out. No, you have to allocate the proper space for a microwave. So in this particular case, I don't know if you could see it, but the wall microwave can be very deep. They can be 18, 21, 22, 24 inches deep. So you have to accommodate the cabinetry for the proper depth of the appliance. Here we have an, a 24 inch deep microwave cabinet. Here we have an 18 inch deep wall microwave cabinet. And this is a 12 inches deep microwave cabinet with a shelf on the bottom for the microwave to sit on. And then this is a raised high dishwasher, which very few people do this, but it is possible to be done. And um, you want it to be no more than 15 inches off the floor. We have a built-in microwave drawers, steam ovens, um, warming drawers, lots of kitchen appliances. Now I'm gonna see, let's do this, I'm gonna hide it. And I'm gonna see if I can show this, you. This is what you get. This is. If I pull. trying to get the um, appliance fix. So let me go like this and I'm going to I'm going to share this. Okay, so what if I go back to here and I want to share my screen and I want to see my Chrome tab Okay, let's see. Okay, this is sharing my Chrome tab. Okay, here are microwave. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. You still should be able to hear me. When you deal with these appliances, this is the page that you need to get from your vendor. You need to have all of these dimensions when specifying an appliance how far behind the frame to the reveal to the top to the reveal overall what's the dimension with the door open all of these critical dimensions are what is necessary in order to specify the proper cabinet to go with the appliance so that could be live um i'm still there Okay, there it is showing the stream. I'm getting there, people. So these specification sheets are very important to get, and not every supplier has them like they used to. Uh, let's see if I share this. Like I was trying to look for the microwave from... Um, sharp. And then I looked at the Thermador. Uh, you're seeing this one, the microwave door. And to get the manuals and downloads and the specifications, the technical specifications in this particular case are written. 
So this microwave is 16 and 5 16 high by 23 and 7 8 deep by 23 no, uh, 23 and 7 8 wide by 23 and 3 8 deep. So this appliance comes to the front of the cabinetry and it's going to move the door. The face of the frame is going to be past the cabinet itself. So the door is flush with the door drawer and the door box is adjacent to it. So I hope you can all see this. But that's the only way I am getting my specs on this. Look at this. They put this way down low. Hello, people. Aren't we just talking about a microwave drawer and where it belongs at 15 inches below the floor? This is kind of, see how you cannot go by what the manufacturers are doing. Because this is clearly in a wall, a base cabinet. And this is all the way at the bottom because I can see this is a floor and this is a toke, you know, this is the, the cabinet and this is way down low. So, th so the appliance company isn't going to tell you how high to put it. They're going to tell you the dimensions of where it, how the how it gets fitted where's the blocking where's the electrical go where's the how far does it go with a trim kit this is what you really need to have when you're dealing with cabinetry and designing and figuring out your um appliances and getting them to fit into the cabinetry pop properly from the beginning um so now let me hide that I'm still in there. So does that make sense? Does that make sense, people? About the microwave and the built-in? You have to have these two things to go one-on-one -on -one with the other. And when you go to support, uh, the put the order through with the cabinet company, they're going to want all the information of the appliances. And they're going to want um, the dimensions, they're going to want the cutouts. You have to make sure that when the cabinetry is delivered, your appliances will go and be installed properly. It's part of the process of doing a kitchen project. It's the planning. It's the specifying. It's the making sure everything is going to fit, the technical drawings. And then it's submitting the order process to make sure that it's all confirmed properly, that we have to check order acknowledgements, and then it goes into production, and then it gets delivered onto the job site, and then it gets installed. And then once the cabinets are installed, the appliances get installed, then countertops get installed. It's a very, very long process that takes a lot of time to dot the I's and cross the T's. So you have to make sure that you follow all of these steps when you're doing a kitchen design project. Never leaving this out to the last minute. You have to have it as a package deal. This is my appliance spec specifications. This is my cabinetry. These are my plumbing fixtures. This is the lighting. It's a group effort. So when you're putting all this together, you make sure all this is done ahead of time and it's properly checked so that when things get delivered onto the job site, the installation goes smoothly. There's going to be problems. There's going to be hiccups. But you want to know that your wall oven is going to slide in space properly. The electric electrician put the outlet in the right spot. The appliance pushes flush to the face frame of the cabinet. The door is installed. It's level. It's supported. It's not crooked. And everything works out smoothly so that when the time comes to install the appliances, you don't have, oh no, my wall oven is the reveal to the microwave drawer below it wasn't properly calculated and it's off by a quarter of an inch and I can't slide my appliances in. Big problem, big problem. So all of that mathematical mathematical calculation is extremely important when it comes to kitchen and bathroom design, technical. A calculator is your best friend.
as is a design triangle. Where's my triangle? I had my triangle the other day. Oh, here it is. Always handy, my triangle to scale and my trusty uh, calculator. I don't care how you design, it's all a matter of math. And then, so it's the function first and then the form. Then you pick out the finishes, the color, this and that and the other thing. And you, when you pick out the finishes and the colors and whatnot, you have to make sure that you check which where's the sun coming from, where's the lighting coming from, what is the material, will it be affected by natural sunlight? If it's a cherry cabinet and you have direct sunlight coming in, it will bleach out the cherry wood. These are natural um, products. These are uh, natural um, thing materials, and the sun is has um, bleaching capacity. That's to our fabrics, to our woods, to lots of things in the home. So when you're doing the kitchen and you're specifying any kind of built-in appliance, make sure that it's no lower than 15 inches and you above the finished floor. You could see from the one manufacturer, they totally didn't have the microwave in the right spot, a, a drawer. Picture leaning down to get what's in the drawer. I don't even want to lean down to pick up what's on the floor. I, I use my feet sometimes to grab it. I'm so lazy. I don't want to bend down and pick it up. So you have to think about ergonomically, like, how am I going to get my hot stuff, my cold stuff, anything? What am I doing with appliance way down by the floor? This is bad design in my opinion. And just because it's people do it doesn't make it a good design, makes it a bad design because weren't you thinking about the end user? Th take a second, close your eyes and walk yourself through the space. Picture yourself doing that task. And not just, oh, it looks good proportionately on that elevation. It works nicely in that my doors and my drawers. No, think about the operation of the appliances. The bottom of the appliances should be no higher than 54 inches off the floor or no lower than 15 inches off the floor. A good average eye line is 48 54, 42, 36. Keep it within that measurement of what is easily reachable and accessible without having to stretch and bend too much. So if you can't find the dimensions online, you need to, such as this, you need to get the manufacturer somehow to get you this uh, view. And this is a packet that you would give to the electrician and to a plumber and to the contractor. You make, make a packet with all of your appliance specs so that the installer places the electrical outlets, the plumber puts his plumbing outlets properly. Everything is planned out ahead of time. So when installation comes, it's a easy peasy, easy peasy cover girl. So you could see how complicated some of these specifications are, but they're critical. It, this is important. If you do a kitchen with built-in appliances and you don't have this information ahead of time, you might as well just close the order and put it away and know that you're going to just be writing them a check right back because problems are going to happen. And keep in mind, kitchen is an expensive project for your client. <gasps> Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, it's an expensive project for your client. It is a big profit margin in your business, the cabinetry. However, if you make a mistake, it's a costly mistake. It's not a few hundred dollars. If that tall oven cabinet can't fit your wall oven and your, um, your 
microwave or anything and appliances hit and things have to be redone, that could cost you $2,000 out of your profit just on a cabinet. So keep in mind how important all these measurements are. So when you're doing your kitchen, remember it's technical. Get all your technical information ahead of time. Do your order processing clear and your order acknowledgements. It's extremely important to, once your order is processed, to now check your order acknowledgement against the vendor because these are people entering in numbers and whatnot. And, and often mistakes can happen because they're typing like this and maybe they hit a P instead of a B and a P means this and a B means that. So you have to really scrutinize and not rush through the order process and the order design process, order confirmation process, and even up to the installation. It's a long relationship from start to finish, and it's on our responsibility as kitchen and bath design professionals to know what to expect. So I'm one of the people who's teaching, helping you learn and grow. I'm working on my Kitchen and Bath Design Academy as we speak, getting ready to launch my uh, courses for you to do your online training and learn more about kitchen and bathroom design and all the technicalities of it. Next week, I'm going to have a guest on Jan Rutgers, and she is um, the owner of Vestibule Design School. And she is also another kitchen and bathroom design specialist who sees the need for this continuing education and more education in our field of kitchen and bath design specialty. There's so much to know. There's a plethora of information to absorb and not everybody can do it all. So I am welcome the um, camaraderie of the other design designers and design schools that are really realizing the lack of, of um, training there is out there for kitchen and bath designers. So I'm one of them. I want to teach you and help you learn the kitchen and bath design business just because, you know, this is what I do. I don't do furniture. I don't do window treatments. All I do is kitchen design and bathroom design. And I've been doing it for 30 years. I've designed thousands of kitchens and thousands of bathrooms. I've done work all over the place. And how did I learn it all? How did I get to the point I am now? I learned from my mistakes. Yes, we all know mistakes make you learn, but in a kitchen, in a kitchen, a mistake is thousands of dollars. So I don't want to see you fail in your business. I want to see you succeed in your business and avoid any um, errors and have somebody to reach out to have resources to go to when you do have questions about your bathroom design project or anything like that. So, um, reach out to professionals and get on and learn as much as you can. I hope that this little video on my little live on, uh, just dealing with built-in appliances and realizing the low, the high, and how important it is to read the specifications on the products that the customer is purchasing in correlation with designing of the cabinetry because no two microwaves are alike. No two well, the only dishwashers, I would say the only universal, and even then they have their heights and some widths. European dishwashers are not as wide as American dishwashers. They're a le little less deep. Um, everything in Europe we know is small. Here in America, everything is big. So that being said, I look forward to next week's episode with Jan talking more about kitchen and bath design education. And I have a couple of other guests scheduled. I want to have some product and whatnot going on. And I appreciate you all listening today. And I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful What's New Wednesday. And tell me what's new with you. Okay, thanks a lot and have a great day. I hope my Be Live worked. I hope my Facebook thing worked. 
and I hope you all are staying healthy and we're all supporting each other through these difficult times. Be well, be safe, and ciao for now.